this aspect, which is the LMS part of it. Yeah. So, so we have an option away if you just notice. Of course, all this, we can publish here. We can publish in the web. If you publish in the web, it's in your computer only. Those go, doesn't go anywhere. See here. C drive, user, document, articulate project. There's a folder you have. Did you notice that folder which is automatically created in your document? Yeah. Everything will be dumped there. It's not going to anybody. So that's where it is. Video, yeah. it is also dumped in your C drive. Word document also in your C drive in your computer the review basically get published you can publish it you know you you can publish it on the the review itself directly or you can manually have it published in your local drive and then upload it over there publish locally for manual upload instead of that you publish it in the web directly yeah? and then you have this is a very important aspect it dumps you in the c drive however it gives you this com file so what we do, we use those COM files so that we will be able to upload those COM files in the LMS. That's how usually it works. So before I show you the COM files, okay. let's understand a couple of these things. Yeah, we have two terminologies, if you notice over here. One is your uh, LMS and one is your LRS. Yeah, so this is what it stands for, LMS and LRS. I'll tell you what exactly is the difference. Uh, all we know, or mostly when we publish, it will go either to either of it. Often the LMSs contain the LRS characteristics. So you know what is LMS, right? Can you tell me what is LMS? Yes, we upload the course there. The course is public using the published using the articulate storyline. If we don't publish using articulate storyline, it will not be uploadable to your uh, LMS. So we must uh, publish it using the uh, your. Uh, I mean this articulate storyline where we get a SCOM file. And using those SCOM files, we upload it into the LMS. So it's basically an application which helps us in track and trace the result and the progress of the learner. So either it could be SCOM file or your, your X API file kind of a thing, right? So that's how usually it works. So LMS is like a software, you can say perhaps. There are different LMSs which are available. Like you can see some of these are examples of LMS iSpring Learn, Adobe Captivate, Prime LMS. Remember, Adobe Captivate, uh, the one which you will be learning is an e-learning. It's a rapid authoring tool. Articulate is also called rapid authoring tool. Okay. At the same time, they also have another package, another software application, a web-based technology called uh, Adobe Captivate Prime LMS. So this Prime LMS will not help in creating the courses. It is your Adobe Captivate, which you will be learning, will help you to create SCOM files. And then we will use this LMS to administer the file. Like okay. organizations okay. use LMSs. So uh, that's a software application where they send a mail to all the learners, all the employees, okay, undergo these courses, so-and-so duration. This is your, so every employee will have a login ID password to log into the LMS and attend the courses. So what is a, how much they have attended? What is the score they have got? All will be captured by the LMS, which your e-learning soft packages like Articulate cannot do. They don't have capacity of it. They have only capacity of creating courses. Check out the Moodle. Moodle is an open source platform because when you attend interview also, sometimes it might ask you questions and all that, you know, are you familiar with LMSs? Have you worked with LMSs? Have you administered any courses on LMSs, etc.? At least you should have an idea what exactly it is and what are the various options. SAP Litmus, see your Adobe Captivate Prime LMS, SAP Litmus, ex extremely expensive type kind of a, uh, your LMS kind of a thing. But there are uh, some local uh, companies also who use a platform called Moodle. Moodle is an open source platform. Perhaps you can Google and also check it out. Helps you to create the uh, your uh, LMS platform, the Moodle. But the only issue is that the this is a uh, open source community, as you can see it over here. So any, any organization can use this Moodle-based platform and they can create their... Uh, this uh, pl platform also their own lms software and many organizations do it and the cheaper rate they sell it also so it has those capacity of doing it so you can see here moodle based open source lms of course also there which you can download and check it out yeah 
now the thing is the lmss which are like your eye spring or captivate or your saplet mouse or blackboard canvas a talent lms many are there this is just a small name they are more secure security wise because for most of the company security is a very important aspect so often the moodle based courses may not have that sophistication of high security because the data getting transmitted from your server to the uh, software to the learner so in between if any hacking happens some kind of a protocol breach then they are they are getting they are getting problems these um, companies are getting problems especially multinational companies they get a problem so what they do instead of going for a moodle based platform they go for a something more secure secure platform so that that's what oh, but i'll tell you the example like micro zoom zoom is a platform versus microsoft teams which is more secure teams is secure so that that's where the difference that doesn't mean zoom is bad zoom is absolutely good however uh, from a uh, from a technical security perspective that's being considered to be more secure the same thing goes over here so that that's where often some of the lmss are kind of having so as i just said lms is a software based platform which basically helps in administering the courses which will help you to see and administer track report and deliver the learning programs but learning programs are all created using the your uh, lmss sorry e learning packages this is rapid authoring tool what we call yeah so now another terminology which is called learning record store lrs yeah so lrs has been mentioned it's x api basically uses a store wherein uh, it's just gives you the tracking over the uh, the the scores which a learner is getting gathers and stores the result only at a central place it will not have a capacity to uh, you know uh, track the activity and the progress of the activity if you attend a quiz then your this is a see, record store it will just record the result mainly the result so what happened those organizations who don't want to spend much money on lms they will go for lrs because that will help them to save some kind of or some bugs maybe because the whole objective is that you take up the course you complete it or not we want the result it means you attended and you got a good score you understood the concepts so that that's what i want so if i'm getting if you're getting a good result it means you you've passed the course you got a good go through i am interested in that now how much you progress how fast you progress or sending a reminder to you all that stuff i don't want in lms because that's expensive i'll do it separately i'll send you a reminder i don't know your progress you need to track your own progress just show me the result that you learned something by attending the uh, your assessment properly the quiz is basically so your uh, lrs so uh, you can see this lms is more popular than your lrs but you should know because your uh, articulate has a capacity of doing it i mean this can be uh, i mean for both lrs and lms you have options to kind of get the uh, output file the scom file x api file to see now see here let me go to home to and publish button and then come to the lms and see here can you see these options scom 1.2 your scom uh, 2004 uh, acci this is another format i'll tell you and then xapi so what you do when you need a only lrs and your client or company tells you no no we don't want all you just give me the xapi output file so you click on this and then you publish so the output file will go for the your uh, you know that uh, uh, because it will be uploaded to lrs so that's how usually been working out so that that's where you can see the kind of a difference which you have at the place yeah now we will move to understand scom very important aspect so let me just kind of get into that uh, part of it so we can see each of these scom how it's been spanned out so you will have these format scom scom refers to shareable content object reference model So what you have to remember, when you Google about it, you will be getting most of the information available about the SCOM. So what happened? Uh, the SCOM files, which are output files, basically tell uh, the, the 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 software how it has to operate. So SCOM basically it's, it's like it governs how online learning content, that's your dot story file, will be integrated to your LMS. Without SCOM file, your LMS will not take the content. 
and that is the reason this this uh, this is so popular i mean this articulate or captivate or your camtasia i spring why because they have a capacity of uh, getting the output file which is a scom file so how would this scom file will look like perhaps it could be something like this if you just check out if i can show you so you can see here this is a this is a scom package so once i click on oh. this if, if once I click on this button and I click on this LMS and I click on uh, this XCOM 1.2 and then publish, it'll take time. That's why I'm not publishing, you know. Yeah. You know so sometimes if it's a one scene, previewing itself will take us so much of time. Perhaps you can publish your course, you know, and then you will be able to see. So I'm not publishing only just because it just got like stops and keep on rotating for publishing for some time. It takes time basically to publish. But this is the output file you will get. The moment okay. you do it. Uh -huh. Now, all this output file, the person who is an LMS administrator, he will take this output file and upload it to the LMS. These files are required. Otherwise, your LMS will not be able to take the uh, upload of the course. In which you see this dot story file is also, the story file is there in the HTML file. The web one which we publish, this one, this web, this web one, it, it gives us a HTML file. So we are just getting HTML file when we publish this. Just one file, this file, see. This dot story, you know, this uh, this file. Yeah. But when you are publishing in the LMS, you're getting more files because all these are required to be. See, for mobile portability is required. The tablet, somebody will use a mobile, somebody will use a tablet, somebody will use a laptop. Isn't it? And then correct, see, this, this is also on, for the LMS, for, for mobile all these things which are utilized in the course for HTML. So these files cannot be distorted. Now, if you remember, we were talking about the JavaScript last time. So there are two options to uh, put a trigger for the JavaScript. One is you insert as a trigger and you generate the output file. It becomes like this. The second alternative, which is, I think, very tricky, not recommended, at least for us, when you don't have a hands-on on JavaScript, will be uh, uh, you create that uh, JavaScript file, the scripted, coded one, and you dump the file here in this COM folder. And then you, that get integrated to the uh, LMS. So that's not, but again, for us, mostly we uh, put it in the trigger because we can preview it correctly. If you put it elsewhere, uh, we cannot check it. We have to check it only in the LMS. Because we have to check the, whether it's functioning or not, right? So SCOM got these versions, as you can see it over here. Your SCOM have 1.0, 1.2. This is the one which we are kind of using. Then your SCOM 2004 second edition, 2004 third edition, fourth edition, and all these are, the, of course, mostly popularly we will be using. That's where you will find these in your, in your articulator if you click on it. You have uh, a drop down, see 2.0 and 2004, these two. Yeah, the older versions, of course, not in prevailing. But again, a quick check when you say 1.2, this was released, this is so long ago. So each version get a, like some kind of an upgradation. It's compatibility also. So you can see here, this is very widely adopted and something which we are using, but you have older versions also there in place. These are the release dates of older previous versions, in which the this 2004 version, sorry. Uh, 1.2 also get updates. It's not like the ones they have released, they are not doing anything. There is updates coming up. Updates. But 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 this these are the two popular versions which are continuing. Yeah, so that's what to be kept in mind. And now you also have, if you notice in the drop down, this AICC. Yeah, AICC. So that's another, uh, uh, you can say, format which is available. So this this was released this year and perhaps uh, uh, it's it's more of like more of a HTTP based which is more of an your uh, this uh, what we call the the web based courses where you will be kind of using this particular uh, format not that popular. Another one uh, X refers to experience like we you know you you use the word user experience UX we use the word you so that's what the X is just an experience at API so basically 
it says that this is also called tin can API. Earlier, if you have seen the pre older version of your articulate, then instead of this word X API, they used to write tin can here. Now that the word they have removed okay. that, yeah, so that used to come. So those who have used earlier, they will be able to see that tin can. I used to see in tin can earlier. Yeah, so it's again a newer uh, platform, but the only thing is that it's something again uh, being more limited to uh, my kind of limited in uses, not every organization using. As it says, a mobile team based learning, cross functionality, sequencing, some of the things you will be finding it more relatively easier. But this is the most, I would say, uh, my like kind of a good, good kind of a latest kind of a thing. But it's more relevant for tracking. If you want to track course, SCOM will help in tracking, no doubt. Your uh, your API, uh, X API would be something which will be more relevant for tracking purpose. Then you have one more, which is your CMI. You know the full form CMI, right? It's a capability, oh. maturity. Yeah, we usually say capability, maturity, that thing. But again, here we refers to companion, Compassion specification. So the, that capability maturity CMI, the, basically the industry maturity, like uh, base level, next level, next level. Say. So this is being called as a companion to uh, your XAPI. So this is another uh, which is there. So it says that it provides that interportability between the traditional LMS and that of X because XAPI is the latest. However, the usage of it is less compared to your, uh, your because most of the people are using that uh, your SCOM 1.2 and 2004, 1.2 is a most uh, popular one. So not everybody adapted for it. So perhaps th these are the some of the versions which are available, which you, which you, you just have to have a kind of a quick familiarity with. You see the release date of it. So this one, 2003, and then the companion, which has been added to your... Uh, XAPI, which is your CMI file. So if you see here, you will find all that over here. Yeah, SCOM 2001, SCOM 2.0, 2004, uh, AICC and XAPI and uh, CMI file. So XAPI and CMI file, like kind of the most, uh, you can say the most upcoming latest, but we are sticking to these, these two because your LMSs also have a capacity to take this. Most of the elements have a capacity to take your the these two versions which you see 1.2 and 2004. Yeah, so just have to keep that in mind a little bit of it.